Hey, howdy everyone. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I record all my lectures and put them online to support my students and working professionals and everyone interested to learn about data analytics, geostatistics, or machine learning. So what we're going to do now is we'll have a series of three short lectures and we'll cover the concept of advanced clustering. We're talking about inferential machine learning where we're trying to do automated assignment of categories to unlabeled data. That's what this is all about. So let's go ahead and set up the problem with this first short video and then we'll jump into density-based clustering and then spectral-based clustering and we'll call it a day. Okay, so first of all, what's the motivation? There are many limitations and assumptions of the commonly used k-means clustering approach. Real data is quite complicated and we need other methodologies that can be more flexible. Just looking at the list of assumptions of k-means clustering, first and foremost, spherical convex isotropic clusters. You know, I, it kind of reminds me of Veragrams. It's this idea of like blob shapes, I think would be a good way to think about it, that. It's just characterizing blobs of clusters. Not really flexible. There's also a bunch of other issues, such as this idea of equal prior probability for a data value or sample to belong to any one of the clusters. Uh, and that can be quite a big problem too. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a really quick review and talk about some of the limitations in k-means clustering and this will motivate us to look at these advanced methodologies. Now we talked a little bit about this in the clustering lecture. So first of all, spherical convex isotropic clusters, we're going to minimize the difference within the clusters. We will be unable to work with complicated geometries. The other assumption of course is that we have equal variances for all features that there's, we can therefore have a reliable measure of dissimilarity in space using the L2 norm, the Euclidean. And we're gonna assume similar size or frequency in the clusters, similar number of data in each one of the clusters. And now, when you look at this data set right here, taken from this blog site right here, thank you very much for that image. What you can see is we run k-means clustering, we're gonna get groupings like this, even though our eye can cue into the fact that we obviously have kind of this group and this group, and they seem to be distinct from each other, but we're missing that because of these assumptions right here, specifically the spherical convex isotropic assumption right here. Okay, now let me just define the idea of data convexity because I've said it a couple times I think I should have a quick slide on it so a subset or cluster of a Euclidean or feature space is convex if for any two points and random points they don't even have to be data values but any points within that space of a subset that a line segment connecting those two points defined right here will be an element of that space or cluster or that area that we're working with. Now, I know to those who are listening very carefully here, you're going to be, well, but clustering doesn't assign a region or area. We're abstracting it, right? Clustering does only assign labels to data. It doesn't actually become a predictive model to say this is a region of that group or label. I understand that, but we're just defining the idea of convexity that we would use within geometry here. And we're extending it or abstracting it to consider and data as being convex or not based on an idea of does it outline have this type of feature where if I drew a line between two data within it, I would go outside of that outline. That would be a way to think about this. Now, I can easily come up with data and I'm a geostats person so I can make up data you know, pretty quickly. And I could have a data set like this, porosity versus permeability, where we clearly have some type of lithological change here. And you can see very quickly that there's these curvatures or shapes that makes this data set non-convex. It's a lot of non-spherical behavior and there's even a density issue locally but also there's fewer samples in here than there are here and so forth and the result is we get this type of behavior. Denser samples, smaller group, 
We've got a spherical attempt to get spherical um, shapes here in the groupings, and it results in a very nonsensible type of cluster assignment. Okay, so this motivates us to get into the concept of a clustering methodology that can see density, a clustering methodology that can incorporate our concept of connectivity, and that motivates us to cover density-based and spectral-based clustering, and I will cover them in the next couple of videos. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. It was very short. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas, and I'm always happy to share my content. I hope it's helpful. Okay, bye.